another type of problem that mathematicians and physicists were dealing with at the time was the problem of tangents to curves. And one of the places where this showed up was in optics. In the 1600s, optics was being studied very diligently by a lot of people. The Dutch had invented lenses and um, had made some early telescopes, and Galileo had improved these telescopes and was able to do some of the first serious astronomical work with them. And Newton also did a lot of study with optics, explaining uh, the nature of light and also uh, how light reflected and refracted. Now, reflection and refraction aren't too hard in some cases. You might have a simple surface here and a beam of light coming in and reflecting off. And you measure these angles. This would be the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection and those angles will be equal and you can also have refraction you might have a piece of glass like this and a beam of light comes in and it bends as it goes into the glass and bends as it comes out now again these types of problems are simple to solve if if we have straight flat surfaces and known angles. But as you know, if we're dealing with optics, we're often dealing with lenses, and lenses are curved. So you might have a shape like this. This would be a cross section of a lens, and light rays coming into the lens. I might have parallel light rays but every point at which the light strikes the surface of that lens it's hitting at a different angle because the surface is curved so the surface is, is curved there's a different angle at each point So you need to be able to find the exact angle or the slope of the curve at each point. And to do that, you need calculus. So as before, there were some relatively simple problems that we could solve, but in the real world, there we quickly ran into more problems that needed a new mathematics. There's another class of problems that requires calculus, and they're, they're known as maxima and minima problems. And we'll be solving problems like this in this course, as well as problems dealing with the slope, different slopes at different points. But I'll show you an example of a maxima and minima problem. Suppose you have a river, and you're going to build a fence to fence in a field next to the river. It's going to be a rectangular field, and you can use one side of the river basically uh, to save yourself some some length of fence you only have to fence three sides because the the cows or whatever you're keeping in this in this pasture aren't gonna aren't gonna jump in the river so you save yourself some fence and you're gonna make a rectangular field and it has a certain width and a certain length and so of course it has a certain area and basically you need to get as big an area as you can so suppose you have a thousand meters of fence thousand meters of fence well you know that the the length here plus two times the width because you have a width here and here the length plus 2w has to equal a thousand so we'll say L plus 2w has to equal a thousand now finding the area for a given value of L and W is pretty easy but you want to find with certainty the exact values of L and W that will give you a maximum area. Find L and W so that A is a maximum possible value. Because that would be the most efficient use of your fence. You build your fence such that, such that you get the, the biggest area that you can. And again, finding those exact values is a whole different problem than simply calculating the area. Finding those two particular numbers that will give you the maximum area, you, uh, you need some calculus to do that effectively. Another example of a 
maximum and minimum problem would be the strength of a rectangular beam. Uh, suppose you have a piece of wood and we'll kind of make this 3D like this. So this is your your wood here and it, the, the beam has a certain height and a certain width and the strength obviously depends on both of those. The strength depends on the height and the width and specifically I'm going to say the strength is proportional to the width and this little symbol just means is proportional to it looks kind of like a circle and a half circle connected and that's a mathematical symbol that just means proportional to the strength is proportional to the width that concept should make sense to you you have a beam twice as wide or you put two beams side by side it will be twice as strong doubling the width will double the strength what might not be as obvious is that the strength is proportional to the height squared a tall beam doesn't flex as easily and that's why if they're if you're building a porch for example or a floor or a house or something you have the floorboards here and then the supporting beams under it stand this way they stand on end like this because they're stronger if they're oriented vertically you don't typically put the supporting beams under the under the porch like this they'll flex more easily if they're turned sideways in other words they're stronger in this orientation tall beams are significantly stronger so this shows up if for example if you need to cut a beam from a log and beams of course are cut from logs so say here's a log and you're gonna cut a beam out of this log well the beams gonna have a certain height and a certain width but you're constrained by the log there's the center and you can't make the beam any bigger than the log itself so you've got a, a height here and a width there and for a given diameter log and that's what you might know you might know the diameter of the log for a given diameter you would want to find the values of H and W that would give a maximum strength so let's just take note of that for a given diameter find H and W that result in maximum strength. And that's typically what you want. The stronger beam will be worth more and if you're going to be cutting these beams out of these logs and selling them you want to get the, the best beams that you can. Now a lot of problems of this nature, a lot of these maximum and minimum problems can be solved with ordinary algebra and trigonometry. But many, many, many maximum, minimum problems require calculus. So we need calculus to solve a lot of these. Before calculus, people were able to get approximations to problems like this. Uh, but after the development of calculus, they were able to confidently come up with exact answers.